God's soul is fire. From a slow simmer to a beautiful braise. Soul is sweet perfection and salty, spicy, saucy goodness. Soul is buttery smooth, melt in your mouth and <laughs> oh my. Discover our soul in Jackson, Mississippi, the city with soul. Welcome back. This season is already off to a great start. Enjoy the conversation. Let's go get some napkins dirty. Let's get to it. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, comedian Rita Brandt. Shokwe Antar Lumumba. Hey, it's Tamara Sharif. Dick Wallace. Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm Dan's partner, Jeff Good. This is Boo Rosini. Until next time, it's your host, Jay Taylor. Welcome to TRIO. As an entrepreneur and business owner, Boo Rossini has a legacy in the South and Mississippi in particular that cannot be denied. He's a recording artist and the president of the Atlanta-based record label, CTE. Boo has experienced life from the projects all the way to the boardroom, and I'm excited to learn about everything in between. So, tune in. Let's go get some napkins dirty. What's up, what's up, man? Uh, not too much. How you, how you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, no yeah. Well, man, I, uh, I'm excited. I talk for the whole team. I'm excited to have this conversation with you. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you having the conversation yeah. with us. And I, wanna, I got a bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm super curious about a lot of different things, man. You've been, you've been a player in the city for a very long time, yeah. so I just want to talk to you a little bit about that, man. Let's get to it. Well, I guess, I guess really to get this thing started, man, I came across way, 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 way back. I'm talking like it had to be like 96, mm. you know? And you said a line. You said, I'm just another man with a dream and a voice that's trying to tell my story. No doubt. So my first question is naturally, what's your story? Man, to sum it up, man, I'm somebody from a small town population might be 13, 14,000. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just had the ambition and the motivation to want better for myself. You know what I mean? And um, 
try to elevate out them circumstances that we was trapped in. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, I really, you know, my story, my story ain't no different than a lot of people's story. You know what I mean? So uh, to sum it up, man, I'm just like the next man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We want better for our family. Yeah. You know, we want better for our kids. You know what I'm saying? As simple as that, man. No okay. cap. No cap. Yeah. Well, boo, give me a second to brag on you real quick. Oh, man, come Just on, man. Just in case give it to you me. don't give know it to who me. I'm sitting here with. <laughs> this is Boo Rossini, a.k.a. Boo, the big boss player. Huh. He's a recording artist and a businessman. And just in case you forgot, the birds still fly south for the winter. <laughs> don't miss right. anything. Nah, he missed that, man. So, Boo, take me back. Take me all the way back. To Canton, Mississippi, some might call it Crack Town. Yeah, I gave it that name. Did you? I gave it that name. We had Jack Town. It was Crack Town. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I gave it that name, man. Like I said, man, like the conditions that, that we brought up in, you know what I'm saying? Like with the internet nowadays, you know what I mean? We were going through the same thing back then that's going on right now. We just didn't have social media. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, just being from that small city, it gave me a lot of jewels, you know what I'm saying? It got, gave me a lot of hard learned lessons, you know what I mean? So, you know, I got a lot of love for that small city, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? And people saying, you know, other state, you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. Nah, if you make it out of Crack Town, Jack yeah. Town, you can make it anywhere, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Well, how'd you get from Kent? Cause I saw a video of you way back in the day, it was you, Bunch of guys. I was standing out front of an apartment complex project. OP, song they call OP it. Project. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How yeah. did you get? I guess the natural question is, how did you get from that yeah. to this? Man, it's just I can't. Okay, I can't do the thing that I do at forty that I was doing yeah. at nineteen, twenty. Yeah. That mean it ain't no growth. That mean my mind ain't grow. Mm. You know what I mean? So like I said, I always had a hunger and a thirst, you know, to make it out them environments, you know what I mean? To make it out the environment. I just seemed better for me, you know what I mean? And I wasn't scared to take the steps, the necessary steps, you know what I mean? Even if it was putting everything on the line or risking, you know, my life for it, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't afraid to do it, you know what I mean? So I think that, that'd be like the difference, you know what I mean? Okay. That, I think that's really be the difference. Okay. That's the only line right there I think it is. Okay. So when you think about right where you came from to where you are today, what I what I found interesting when I was doing a lot of research on you is you covered you covered in a lot of mystery, yeah, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's by choice. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's just you know hey. kind of the persona that you have about yourself. But it's hard to find info on. You. Yeah, man. Like for a long time, I was scared of these lights right here. Yeah. I was scared of these cameras for a long time. Like I said. It go back to my environment. Mm -hmm. My environment, man, like, it ain't where you show and tell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You hide and tuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? It ain't yeah. where you show and tell. Because yeah. I seen what happened to those. Mm -hmm. The ones that, you know, go that way. So I ain't had to bump my head to learn that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of it came from instinct. You yeah. know what I mean? Coming from that town, a lot of it just came from instinct, man. I move off instinct. If it don't feel right, going right, I ain't going right. I'm gonna go left. You know what I mean? So like, I just based a lot of it on that. You know what I mean? Now you lost your best friend, according to what I looked up. You lost yeah. your best friend when you were twelve. Yeah. Or 13. 13. 13. 13. Yeah. How how did that trauma impact you? Man, that's really like. Like I said, we had the same thing going on that's going on right now. Yeah. We just didn't have social media. So, you know, Trump, he was a big figure in the hood. You know what I mean? He was ahead of his time. You know, he was a leader. You know what I'm saying? And he was showing us, like, at an early age, you didn't have father figures. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, he was one of the people that we looked up to to guide us in the right direction because, you know, like I said, he was a natural born leader. And, uh, you know, just to see that happen and the way it happened, I was there when it happened. And you were there. Yeah. So like to see that happen, man, it happened from one of our best friends that we hung out with every day. 
And that was one of the life lessons I was telling you about the jealousy. The jealousy, because that's all it was. You know, Trump was getting his money. He the first one came through with the Chevy, you know what I'm saying? With the wheels on it, do his own sound. He's going to cut out hair. He was a leader, man. The, 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 the uh, quarterback, you know what I'm saying? He was a real leader, man. And like, we had the same name. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, it was, it was deep like that. It was my brother right there, man. I got his name tatted on my back, you know what I mean? And uh, just through the years, that's one incident. Through the years, I went through so many of them, you know what I mean? So you start going through so many of them, going through so many funerals, man, it kind of numb you to where, like, you know what I'm saying? Man, the last time I cried was probably when I was 20 or something. For real? Yeah, that's the last time you I ain't cried. Man, I ain't cried since I was 20, bro. I wish that I should have known you, bro. You <laughs> know what I mean? So it's just different things like that. Like, yeah. and then when things like that happen, that's where the music really started coming from. That was my next question. Yeah. How, when did you get into music? So I've been doing music as far as I can remember, as far as like when I was in high school. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We had clicks, you know what I mean? We skipped school, bro in the graveyard. We, we tell them like, man, y'all ain't got shit on us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it started from there, man, and we kept on, just kept on doing it. I just yeah. kept on doing it. So when I really got ready to do it serious, I just was looking at what P now was doing, uh, you know what I'm saying, on the independent side. And I started learning the business side of it first before I even came out with music, you know what I mean? So I did my first tape, man, and it was called Birds Fly South for the woman. Mm. First tape, people didn't even know in surrounding areas that I did music. You know, people in my hometown know I did music. So I remember I just pressed up a thousand copies. Man, I probably went out on the weekend, Lake Heiko, uh, what, gas station. Hand to hand. In the trunk, coming straight out the trunk. I did, I pressed up a thousand units. They were probably gone in three days. So I went and got 5,000 units next time. And I just took that money and I flipped that money just like if it was anything else. You know what I mean? I invested back in the company. You know what I mean? So I got to a point where, you know, the mom and pop store was around and I started putting it in the mom and pop store on consignment. They called me right back. I need another order. I need another order. Cause they was putting it in all their stores like Bebop everywhere. You know what I mean? The Camelots in the mall, you know what I mean? Yeah, back Bro. then, man. So got up but when it was all said and done, I was probably at a, like 120,000 records out the, out the trunk. From between here, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, Louisiana, and Texas. So what so during that time your plan was what? Right? It's just plan, was, I'm telling you, we was going in there not even knowing. If if it didn't sell that thousand record, I probably wouldn't have messed with it no more. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that made me think, oh, okay. So now, is this before One Life, One Love? This was before. It was before. One so Life. Wh where does so, One Life, One Love so, come in? So I started out, that's when I started signing other artists. So the previous situation was me and another guy. Mm -hmm. So when, when I started signing other artists, I, I came up with a whole nother label. Okay. You know what I mean? So That's you've been signed, signing artists? Yeah, I signed Queen Boys. I signed two artists from Memphis, Goldie, J, uh, J1. Uh, who else? I had Shuck sign. Uh, I had a female out of Houston sign. Oh, you know shit. what I mean? So we was doing it then. We was coming out with compilations then. Okay. And then when uh, I just remember, man, we had the rap trucks. Uh, man, we had about four rap trucks, but you know, we all came together collectively. Like I got my dude Greedy, he out of Vicksburg. Uh, Beans out of the Queens, you know what I mean? And we all Voltron. And the thing about it, we made it work. And I ain't seen it happen. We all was from different little towns. And we Voltron together and we made it big. Yeah. Yep. Now, did you purposely, because it's it seems like a lot of your career progression went from Canton to Jackson, and then it seemed like almost Houston. Right. Had a big pull on you because now right. you're, you're you're kind of based out of Atlanta from Between what I Atlanta understand. Between Atlanta and Houston. Between, okay. Yeah. So how did, I, you know, I keep asking this transition question, but how yeah. did you get from Jackson to Houston? How did Man, that I'm going to be honest with you, right? I like honesty. You're right. <laughs> I was in my hometown. Okay. It got too hot in my hometown. For you. For me. I moved to Jackson. It got too hot in Jackson. 
I moved to Houston. Mm. And I told her, I don't have to bump my head out of sight, out of mind. Put that heat, let's shift that heat. Yeah. You feel me? I had a situation going, they calling us out on the news. Frank Milton, you remember that? Yeah. Man, we got posters in the police station. You know what I'm saying? I we got people telling, yeah, like, it just got, it was hot. And I just know out of sight, out of mind. I don't have to be here every day. If I'm in this fire, it's only a matter of time before I get burned, man. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of your story, I think a lot of your story has been around trends, right? Mm. I, I came across, <clears throat> I came across an article from like 09. Yeah. Right? Like 08, 09, somewhere in that area. Yeah. And you were, you were saying something along the lines of, at the time, MySpace and Facebook and Twitter were mm. kind of starting to blow up. Mm -hmm. And you you said something like, personally, I'm not a fan. I'm right. not a fan of MySpace. I'm not a fan of Facebook. I'm right. not a fan of Twitter. But you was like, as artists, we got to look at the opportunity it is. Yeah. Now we don't have to put out all these albums. Right. We can try and target the clip. Right. How do you keep your thumb on the pulse for all of this? Like, thank you. Basically, it go back to what I was saying, instinct. Okay. You know what I mean? So I move off instinct. I just feel like that was gonna be the next thing. Don't nothing stay right here forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That can mean we're gonna be stuck in time then if it stay right here. Yeah. We stuck in time. Yeah. But the clothes ain't gonna change, the shoes yeah. ain't gonna change. Like we stuck in time. Yeah. So I, I could see, you know what I'm saying? It's shifting that way. Yeah. And and it's a gift and a curse with it. So the good side to me when it started happening, when the social started happening was we were spending uh, if we get a hundred thousand CD, we had to spend a hundred thousand dollars. If we get a hundred thousand posts, we had to spend a hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? So with that, you got a hundred thousand followers. You ain't spend nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Nothing. Nah, I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. That's, that's that's smart. That's smart. That's smart. Oh, you know, that's the pros. That's that's how I look at it. You know, and then like me personally, man, like I'm not scared of progression. I like progression. That's why we're here right now. You know what I'm saying? Trying to do something progressive for my state. You know what I mean? Great segue. So, obviously, we got you on the show, Dirty Napkins. No doubt. So, why trio? Trio, name wise, you mean? Or, or oh. let's start there. Name wise. Name wise. So, trio came about like I was trying to come up with a name. Like, I got a, I got a, I got another spot in my hometown, and when I walked in it. I seen a, a blue skylight mm -hmm. and uh, the sun was coming through. I have another spot similar, like it's, it's a restaurant lounge. Okay. And I call it Sky Blue. Okay. Cause I see the sky and yeah. it was blue. When I walked in here, I seen the different levels. You walk, my realtor walked me through the different levels. If I can't see it when I first walk in it, I'm not gonna mess with it. Yeah. I seen where, ev where everything is right now, I seen where it go. So when I walked in this building, we had the first floor, I saw my dude, commercial. Next, the third, uh, the second, third, and fourth floor, residential. So it's different levels to this? Oh yeah. I ain't know that. Yeah. So the second, third, and fourth floor gonna be residential. And then on the top is the rooftop, the sky bar. Okay. So when I walked in, I said, that's it. Them the three entities. So we're going to call it Trio. It represent that three. Right. Yeah. So why, why was it important for you then to open a restaurant or lounge I, bar in Mississippi, in Jackson? First of all, I wanted to plant roots. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's part of my planning process. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I done traveled the world, like, like I done been different places. And when I come back home, I just seen a void, you know what I mean? And then I done stayed in places where they had residential, I own condos, they have, you know, commercial on the first floor, residential on the yeah. other floor. I just feel like we didn't have that, you know what I'm saying? I want to bring it to the city and then I want to do it in a, in a way to where I wanted to make it comfortable enough, nice enough, you know what I'm saying? Upscale enough to where you don't have to go out of town to get that experience. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. So that was my whole motive behind it. You know, my concept behind it. Mm. And that's why we here. Okay. okay. Well, naturally speaking, so when you think about the restaurant business in Mississippi, what other local spots or what other spots do you like in the city? 
Uh, it's called my mama kitchen. Okay. <laughs> I got you. At first, I thought there was a restaurant. Yeah. I was like, I ain't heard of that one. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't accept too many customers. I got you. Yeah, yeah. I got you. But now Your mama, mama still local? Yeah, she can. She don't want to leave us. She don't want to leave. Nah, she ain't gonna go nowhere. She's not gonna go nowhere. She ain't gonna go nowhere. Nah, she ain't gonna go nowhere. You ain't never tried. Have you? I know you done tried. Man, too. she's not going nowhere. She ain't rocking with. Nah, she ain't going nowhere, man. I, I have her with me for three or four days. She ready to go back she home. She ready to get back to the house. Yeah, man. And which is cool, cause see, she keep me up on a lot of what's going on. Just where well. she know everything. Yeah. She one of those moms. She know yeah. everything. Yeah. What's your What's your dynamic like with your mother? Like growing up in this, I, I, I've I've read a lot on you. Yeah. And your 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 upbringing, but yeah. what's that family dynamic like? Like as far as my mom go, I commend her because, like I said, my my father wasn't there. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she was she was pretty tough. You know what I'm saying? She she was a tough mom. But when I got old, I realized what she was trying to do and try to keep me away from. Mm. And you know, when you're a kid, you just gonna run to what they try to keep work. you away from. You know what I mean? So when I look back at it. Between her and my grandma, like, like me and my grandma, like, we was locked, we were locked, you know, we real locked in, you know what I mean? So, uh, them two play an important part, man. They try to keep me grounded, you know what I mean? Yeah. And know, um, I just remember I used to worry a lot. I was gonna ask you, right? Like when you think, when you think about your background and all of that, and how you came up, yeah, there's probably a lot of stress you put on your mom. It was. How do you? How, lot how did that make you feel when you think about it? Man, I look back at it, man, like. You know, I look back at it, you know, like I said, I understood what she was trying to do. Yeah. But nobody's gonna understand what you're trying to do. Yeah. In the path you take, you know what I'm saying? You working, like I said, you're going against the odds. So you're working with what you're working with. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. And a lot of people don't make it out of them circumstances or them conditions. You know what I'm saying? So it just happened that, you know what I'm saying? I kept my faith to a certain extent. And I try to, you know, move in a certain kind of way. Like I said, our instinct, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like that's the only reason we sing right here. Yeah. The only reason. And what, boo, what were you chasing, right? Like, back then, like you doing all this, you making I, all this music, moving state to state, like yeah. what, internally. Because I really, I really would, yeah. this, this interview would be a home run for me. Yeah. I want to learn about you, right. right? What were you chasing internally at that point in your life when you were doing all of this? Man, to be honest with you, I tell you, it's the environment, right? Mm -hmm. We're just a product of environment. You know, some of this food. I go, that's what it's there for. Yeah, that's what it's there for, man. So, basically, man, it's like the environment. You're a product of your environment. Mm -hmm. These are the things I've seen growing up. And I told you, like, that's why I'm a certain one with my kids right now, because I know the impact that a father has when he's not there and when he's there. You know so, I mean? growing up, what, what was your father around? Or? So, yeah, he wasn't there. So, I think yeah. I was just being influenced from the outside. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, you know, it had a lot to do. Like, it was in the project. So, that, like, we were looking up to them. So, when you when we talk about just the dynamic of you and your, your, your mom and your grandmother, obviously, as you just talked about, oh, yeah. I, you know, the natural question would just be, what was that relationship and dynamic like with you and your father? He didn't play a significant role. Okay. Up, you know. Okay. And um, uh, like I like I said, my story is similar to a lot of kids' story. You know what I mean? And I just know the impact by me being the father of my kid. I wanted to do what my father didn't do because yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it it, it, it had. A, I, I know the difference from having both of your parents and not to just having one. You know what I mean? So. Uh, but the thing about it, I had a strong mother. And I had a strong support system too, just as well. Like it's 13 of them, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so you know, uh, like I said, we get influenced from the outside, you know what I mean? So growing up in them conditions, growing up in the neighborhood and projects, man, we just influenced by the outside. Yeah. Well, where, let me just ask you real quick. I'm, I'm just curious. This question just popped into my mind. Where does the name Boo Rossini come from? Is that like your name or like? Yeah, so, that, I grew up with that name from from, a, from my childhood, right? Boo, okay. they call me Boo. They just call you Boo. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I grew up with that name from childhood. You know okay. What I'm and um, the other part of it, 
Rossini part came from like, once we clicked up, go tag your name tomorrow. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Okay. So, you know, we, once we clicked up, everybody that was around, we came up from the type of name, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what was the transition then from Boo the Boss player to Boo Rossini? Hey, just like I said, just the growth. Just the growth. That's all, it was just the growth. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it fresh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what it was. Well, when I was, when I was looking you up, like I said, I've been, I think I told you this a little bit before we got started. I've been listening to your music probably the last three days straight. All right. Just like, I really want to get into his world, man. And if you allow me just to say this, there was a song you put out in um, August of 2021. It was titled Fear of the Fall. Right. Right. And, and, and I don't want to speak, I don't want to speak for the Dirty Napkins crew. I'm going to speak for myself. Right? right. 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 That song resonated in particular with me because as as the host of this show, yeah. I'm starting to come into my own. I'm getting a little more notoriety. Right. And I am genuinely insecure about the fall. So yeah. when I come across this song that right, you right, made right. called right. The Fear of the Fall, right. the question right. naturally has to be, did you make that song thinking about the fall or thinking about the people who are worried about the fall? Because I'm, if you did, yeah. you touched me with it. But that was the, that's what music do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what we make music to do, you know what I'm saying? But who would apply to? Who it will touch? You know what I mean? So, and like I said, it's not no different. We all go through these emotions. We all go through these thoughts, you know what I mean? And, and that's my thing, like, in, in the reverse of the world, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be scared of the fall, though. You know what I'm saying? Are that's you? How, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't be scared of the fall yeah the reverse of it was hey you don't have to be scared of the fall everybody got their thought of the fear of the fall but like that's how we get from point a to point b man we take them steps you know what i'm saying can't be scared to take them steps you know what i'm saying that you you the thing about success you got to fall yeah you know what i'm saying you yeah. got to fail yeah you got to fail that's part of success it's failing and but directly at you though right yeah. directly back yeah. at you you think about everything you've done, right? I mean, you 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 you've essentially come from A yeah. and made it to let's just say Z, right? Yeah. You've never thought about the fall. You've never been afraid of the fall. Man, I'm gonna tell you. That's a long way down, boo. Let me tell you something. The only thing we was here first. It wasn't no fall. We we think we can't fall. You know what I'm saying? When you get that mentality, like, we, we put it all on the line. So how you gonna be scared and put it all on the line? You know what I'm saying? Like, like how you, we, we gamble with life. You know what I mean? So how you gonna, you can't be scared of that. You know what I'm saying? I was ready to take everything that came with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So in order for me to, when I made up my mind to go ahead first, like, I'm gone now. Like, I'm in. I'm in. It ain't no, you know what I mean? Like, ain't no time to even think about it. Like, we in there now. We're in the fire. Yeah. We're in the snake pit. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So at that point, think about it. How you going? If I was scared, I just still would have been. Like, that's the, like, like you gotta get in them in uncomfortable places. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta be, you gotta get in them uncomfortable places, man. What has made you the most uncomfortable on this journey so far? To be honest with you, bro. On this journey with like. I wouldn't say nothing because I'd do it all over again. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say nothing. I'd do it all over again because my path, like, I think all our path is meant to be traveled the way it's meant to be traveled. That's how I look at life, man. You know what I mean? So I, tell, I don't look in the rear view mirror. I look at the windshield. I look through the windshield. I don't look at the rear view mirror. So I just want to progress and move forward. Like, even anything that done ever happened, man, because, like, I done had incidents where I've been in car accidents. I done broke my neck, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Like, if it wasn't meant for me to be here, I wouldn't be here. That's how I look at it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I done had, well, if it, I got partners, I told you, I lost my home, boy, 13. If it was meant for me to lose, lose if they were meant to lose me, I think I would have been out of here. You know what I mean? So, like, I think as you get older, you get more wiser, and you move more different and more careful. Yeah. 
But at them particular times, you're not thinking that far. Yeah. So, and I done lost a lot of them trying to escape them environment, trying to find a move forward, you know what I mean? And that's how I look at it, man. Like, I move off faith yeah. at this point. It's pure faith. You know and, what I mean? And let's talk about that, right? You, you touched on something that I want to really highlight. Um, you were in a very bad car accident, right? right. In 2008. Right. Um, and if I remember correctly, it was essentially the same night Barack Obama was elected president, right? Right, right, right. right. And not only was this a very bad car accident, the physician that was operating on you told you there's a chance you might never walk again. Right. 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 I mean, that's terrifying right. to somebody. Right. What, but that, what that was your so mental you, like? I mean, you, you yeah. said you broke your neck. I yeah, mean, right like. Yeah. Yeah, right here. They had to operate. Man, it was like an eight hour surgery. You know what I mean? And um, that's another thing showed me like, you know, what you saying, what you chasing. That showed me no matter what you chasing. When it's time for you to slow down, don't nothing matter, man. I'm sitting in that hospital bed like, don't none of this shit matter no more. You know what I'm saying? All that shit, all that fast, all that moving fast, man, when it when it's when it's all said and done, man, don't none of that shit matter, man. That's how I'm sitting up in the hospital bed looking, man. Yeah. Strength though. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, you 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 laying in the hospital bed, and I don't yeah. I hate to keep harping on this. I'll let go. But like, that, that's a different type of mental space to be in, yeah. right? Yeah. Right, I know if somebody was to tell me, I, right. I may never walk again, like. But that's what I was telling you about my mentality. It got, see, my mentality was at a whole different space when I was younger. Like, like I told you earlier, I was willing to take the licks, the risks, or everything that come with it. You know what I'm saying? So if that was my faith, that was my faith. I got to accept it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Anything that happened, I got to accept it. Mm. And that's how I look at life. I gotta accept it. But at the same time, move off instinct just as well. You know what I mean? So I have to accept it, man. Whatever come with it. So that's how I move. So is history that moves you, saying, Remember this day. So is the spirit inside each of us that never gives up. So is a voice, a voice that says, Listen to me. Discover our history, our spirit, our soul in Jackson, Mississippi, the city with soul. Welcome back to season three of Dirty Nap. Today, we're at Apollo's Simple Mediterranean. We're here at Godfrey's North. Welcome to Trio, Barrel House here in the Fondry District. I've enjoyed a spread of food ranging from Mediterranean, Caribbean, French, and my personal favorite, Soul warming southern cuisine. Here at Saltine's Oyster Bar with Nissan Cafe. We're here at Tuck Tuck Boom. Let's go get some napkins dirty. My first love, man. Yeah. Forever love music, man. Yeah. My what do you, first love. What's what side of the business do you like? Now, let's bring up a couple good questions, but I'll start here. What side of the business do you like the most? Do you like recording more or do you like being on that? We'll call it the administrative side, I guess, right? The business side. Yeah, yeah, the executive. The executive yeah, side. Yeah, we, we play go. from the executive, executive side. side. So, like, you got to elevate this as well. Even okay. if you are uh, artist, you know what I'm saying? It depends on what type of artist you want to be. Mm -hmm. So I done played it from both sides. You know what I'm saying? Like I was signing, I was signing artists early. Yeah. They was having a one life change. Like I was doing this for artists early. I was getting them advanced out of my pocket. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? I went and got million dollar deals and I told them I wasn't signing unless we signed everybody. Yeah. I walked in them office like this. Cause I, I saw a deal that yeah. went south with Interscope. Right. Right, what was that all about? Yeah, that's what happened. So when I signed with Interscope, like I said, they, 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 they was coming to the South trying to find out what's hot, what's moving. And um, 
Ant- Anton is Foxy Brown's brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, he came, he was in Alabama. And I told him we was moving to Alabama this way. He's like, my name kept popping up. So he got the, my number for one of the mom and pop stores. He reached out to me. You know, he was like, man, we interested in signing an artist from down south. Woo. And your name keep coming up when I'm hitting these spots. And I was like, you know, I ain't thinking that never because I'm still running. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, you know, if you want to meet up, you know what I'm saying? I told him where I was. And uh, he was like, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, meet you in Mississippi. So we met up and we had a conversation. And um, after I left the conversation, I told my partner, I was like, man, that ain't on nothing. You know what I mean? Man, the man called me back. He had two first class tickets. Oh, wow. You okay. come to New York. Yeah. I called my same partner who I had signed. I said, hey, they got two tickets, man. What you gonna do? Woo, woo. I said, man, I'm gonna go. Yeah. I remember this. I was on my way to Houston on the highway. And uh, I said, man, so we end up going out there, meeting with them. And uh, Steve Stout, I think mm. that's Nas' manager now. Big time. OG yeah, in the game. Yeah, right? so he the one we sit down with. And he was asking me, man, what it gonna take, you know? So they was coming at me as an artist though. But remind you, we moving as a label already. I got about five artists signed. We already got the rap vehicles. We already moving units, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I told him, man, the only way I'm gonna be interested in doing a deal is we bring everybody in. So they gave me a labor deal. And I remember, I remember, they flew us back out there. LA was stayed at the Munson. And I stood down with Jim Iveen this time. We end up doing the paperwork after we send it to the lawyers, work the terms out. You send with the heavy hitters. Oh yeah. But look, I remember this, right? He asked me, so when we signing the paperwork, right? He asked me, man, why you ain't excited? Ask you that. Yeah, yeah, me why I ain't excited. Were you not excited? I wasn't. Cause I know this is like a bank loan. Okay. You feel what I'm okay. saying? I know we feel okay. gotta go do the work. Okay. So you see like, it for what that, it is. Like for what it is. Like I told you, we grew up out P, man. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So he was giving us the game back then through the music, you know what yeah. I mean? So I'm like, I'm looking at this, I know what it is. So like, they had some internal problems to where him and Jim I. V. had some internal problems going on. And um, our, our tape got put on, our music, our release stuff got put on the back burner. You know what I mean? And um, I asked him, I said, man, look, I buy myself out the contract. You know what I mean? I'm sitting on a double CD. I think I'm the first one to drop the double CD called now Block how, the Block. How, how would you buy yourself out of a country? You had that much cash stacked yeah, up? Yeah, I already had money. We was already selling you. We already moved. Yeah. We were moving already. So it wasn't so like whatever, you needed the money nah, from I the label. I didn't need the money. I need the exposure. The nationwide exposure. That's all they could have gave me. Mm. They gave me money to run my label. So that's what it was. Yeah, for. they gave me money to run my label. Mm. Yeah. What is the what is the entertainment industry like what's the deal right you think about i think about all these people that rap all these women that sing men that sing right but it's still like a one percent of people that actually can break in actually can make a hit actually can get inside the what's the ugly truth of the entertainment industry man this shit like playing a lot of it's like playing, you might come up with something right now, you know what I'm saying, some catch right now, put this shit on there, it, it, it jump, you know what I mean? But that's the gift and the curse with it, you know what I'm saying? It, I don't think it's even based off talent no more. I think it's, it's based off being consistent, you know what I'm saying, being consistent. Then you got the ones that'll come in and they'll do their one, two thing and they out the door again, you know what I'm saying? So like, but you got something that come in and take it serious. And like I said, to a lot of people, it's therapy. So you're giving people real story, real life, and a lot of people don't play with that part of it. And it, it, like even in my case, like I release when I want to release when I feel like I got a message in it. You know what I mean? So I don't just do music just to do the music because it's too true to my heart and too true to what I go through. You know what I mean? I tell you like therapy session. So I don't play with it on something, but some people play with it that way as well. You know, it's, 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 it's manufactured. You know what I'm saying? So you really look at the music in the practical sense of, this is a therapy session. Right. You go into the booth to get exactly. something off your chest. Right. Steve. Right. And, and it spread a certain message to even the ones that like, through, through the trials and trials I done been through. 
I know a lot of young cats going through it. So I don't even want to do the music and not put the message in there with the music, like give them both sides of it, right? All right, you doing this now, but this lead to that though. You know what I'm saying? But there's certain ways you can do it. Like I want, I want, to, I want to deliver a message. It's just not gonna be no music. So that'd be the difference too. You know what I'm saying? You got different kind of artists, man. So that's how I look at that side of it. You know what I mean? So staying in the staying in the music business locally, right? Mm -hmm. We've talked about the way you keep your finger on the pulse, your ear to the street. Yeah. What artists do you What artists do you think are next local? Man, I'm gonna tell you this. I had I had a chance, and I reached out to probably four of them that have made it already. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about that's gone. They out of here. But I seen it coming before it came. You know, just dealing dealing with, you know, my circle, we didn't get on it in time. But it was right there and I presented it to him. I brought it to him. We reached out to him. It just wasn't moving fast enough. You know what I'm saying? We didn't move on it fast enough. You see what I'm saying? But as far as locally, I think we got a lot of talent. We got a lot of these kids, man, that came up with hit records that been stole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They've been so I just think at the same time too, we got to come up with our own sound. Mississippi. Mississippi you sound. You don't think we have it? I don't think that. I'm going to tell you why. Tim. I'm going to tell you why. You can go down to New Orleans, right? Mm -hmm. You know when you hear New Orleans. Right? Bounce. You know when you hear Baton Rouge music. Yeah. You know when you hear Texas music. You know when you hear uh, Memphis music. You know this already. You know when you hear Atlanta music. They got their own sound. We, we, I, me, me, this probably be the next thing I do once, once I get all my fares in order. I'm gonna sit down, man, and figure out a way where we can get with these producers and give us our sound. Yeah. I wanna sit down with them and give us our sound. Cause like, we don't have, like, everything we do is gonna be recycled to me. Yeah. It's recycled. The melody is recycled. The beats recycled from something you done heard already. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? We don't, we don't have that. We don't. Like, we don't have no identification. So do you think that's, because I mean, when you think about mainstream artists coming out of Mississippi, I think one of the big guys we got blowing right now is Akeem um, and, and, and other artists. But yeah. when you think about maybe what's holding some of our artists, our homegrown artists back, you think it's the lack of our own sound? I just think if we gonna open a door, it gotta be a door opening where we go in all at one time. It can't be this one over here doing this, this one doing this. Because it, it's like you just shoot instead of you just shooting a third eight mm -hmm. instead of AK. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So like, so it don't have the same impact. Mm -hmm. Like when you hear these, when you hear these people coming, like think about it. Like just, just just look at what's going on. You know Memphis, they coming, they coming, they coming. They got their beats. Like they had them three, the three six mafia beats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you you got that and you they got their own sound, man. So I just think we gotta tune in on that. And I ain't saying like I think we only gonna go so far if it's one order. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think it gotta be a collective. We gotta really sit down, plan, plot, and strategize. Cause that's what they do in the A. That's what they do in other cities. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They all collectively come together. Yeah. Everybody just shooting their own shot. Ain't nobody organizing. Yeah. And that's what I'll tell you what I was doing back then. That's how we like truck like we didn't get the fame, but we got the money. Yeah. From the label. You feel me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we got the money though. Yeah. But it's cause how it was organized. That's what it was. When you when you think about the tragedy of just some of the local rappers that we've lost. Yeah. Right? I'm talking I know. specifically, not even worldwide. We've lost a lot, Nip, Dolph, but I'm talking about here locally. Right. How does that make you feel as a rapper turned businessman that made it out of this environment? Right. Like you said, I think it's a tragedy. You know what I mean? Because these was people that was, you know, a few of them was on the verge of really you know coming up you know what i'm saying the way they they can eat off and then like the thing about when one rapper eat off it he able to buy food for his family dog. so it go further than just 
one person eating off. He able to provide for his family at the same time. That's why I don't knock no nobody that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Able to go make music, make money off it, and provide for their family. I don't knock it. What, it don't matter what kind of music it is, you know what I mean? So I think it is a tragedy, but I think the climate we in right now, like I told you, it's been going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So climate we in right now, man, it's, it's rough right now out here, man. You gotta be safe out here right now. Yeah. You gotta move a certain kind of way out here right now. You gotta be conscious of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now nobody, <laughs> and this may be just because your reputation precedes you, mm. but uh, I, I like to try and find some critiques and criticisms out there on people. I couldn't find a lot about you, but I, I did find one, mm. right? So one guy made a comment. He said, oh, you know, Boo, Boo more concerned with nice cars and nice clothes than he is with music. Mm. Do you think that's a fair critique? No, because I got that out the way early. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing that early. I've been mm. doing that, man, for a long time. Mm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, but uh, now and then, that's somebody, like you said, it's a critique. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I feel like if I worked for it, or whatever I did for it, yeah. I'm old that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So like you said, it's a critique. Yeah. You know, I critique a lot of things, but that's not my business. Yeah. You feel me? If I'm focused on me, I'm gonna be able to buy them cars mm -hmm. and them houses and do them investments and get these people jobs. Yeah. <laughs> you feel yeah. me? Get these people uh, a place to stay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do the things I do for the kids I just did yesterday in Canton for the school. What you do? Yeah, so they took their test. So, you know, I did the things where we did the slides, the water slides, you know what I'm I saying? Know. All this stuff, cause I'm showing them like, you know, how do you go do your work? You know, I work, man. You can play a little bit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Relax. You know what I'm saying? We did the popcorn machine, we did the snow cone machine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I do the things with the school that I do uh, for the football team, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I donate over there and then, you know, we got that relay for life. You know what I'm saying? I donated that. That's something my mama into. You know what I'm saying? It's a walk on the square. So it's, it's different things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, if you're going to critique, you feel me? Yeah. They ain't going to add that to the critique. Nah. Yeah, they ain't going to never add that to nah, the critique. Nah. I'm going to die. Let's, let, let's dive into a little bit of this food, man. I, I, I guess before we order for real. Oh, yeah. What, what, you, what you into, man? Oh, that's some chicken skewer. Chicken skewers. Yeah, them spring rolls, man. Loaded fries. Let me try it out. Oh, yeah. Try, oh, try yeah. some of these fries out real quick, man. Oh, yeah. See what we got here. See what we got here. That cheese got a little cold on top. Oh, man, bro. Nah, we're going to hook it up. Oh, yeah. Knock yeah, yourself out, man. So, you giving back to your home city. Right. Because for you, that gives you what? Because uh, to me, they didn't do it for us. Okay. I mean, and the person that I did it with was someone that I grew up with. And um, she thought it mean a lot to the kid. So by mean a lot to the kid, mean a lot to me. So it was a no brain. Yeah. Okay. How do you ran, ran, random question? How do you relax? You got Man. you got all this going on. You got all this stuff you doing. At what point do you sit back and what do you do when you? So, what I do, I go out to the road. What was this? Oh, the spring road. The spring road? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right, I'm listening to you. Yeah, so, what we do, you know, I relax out by the water, so I might go out by the reservoir. I might take my staff out to the reservoir. I might take my staff out to Bowling. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we get away like that. I got a boat out there, so I might take them on the on, on the boat. You know, what I'm saying, we just get away. 
I listen to some music, grab food. I just things like that, man. Just to decompress. But for you though. Yeah. I, I hear you just told me you take the staff out there and I think that's all yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm talking about, it's gotta be a point where you like, I want some time for me. But I don't know if you picked that up yet, uh, but for me, making other people happy, make me happy. So that would drive you? That's what drive me. Making other people like happy and have some experience in. You know what I mean? That make me happy to see everybody having a good time in the energy right. You see what I'm saying? So that do a lot for me right there. You know what I mean? Because I know they go a long way with people be the simple thing. And I know that because they come up to me so many times and tell me that's what it be. So to me, man, like, I'm big off energy. And um, it ain't it ain't too much I had done because like I done did all this early. That's what I tell you, like, it ain't too much, like, the cars don't excite me. Don't none of that shit excite me no more. What excites you, man? That's what I'm saying, like, to make Making other people, people happy. Yeah, like, other people, man, seeing them, you know what I'm saying? Family members, seeing my kids happy, seeing my staff happy. It, it's things like that. that that's, that's what I'm in tune with what right makes, now. What makes your kids happy? I'm saying, uh... In just in particular, in general, in general. So, this is what it is. Me moving around so much. This is what my little boy do. Yeah, tell me about it. So this is what I do. So I leave here every Monday. Come back on Friday. Here. Yeah, so I leave here Monday. Come back on Friday. So I go out there. And what I do, I already be in the house while he at school. So when he come in, I'm high. <laughs> you are. I'm high. Hey, that's all right, man. I'm high. That's all right. That, and that's when so, I that's, pop, that, that says a lot about you. And when I pop out on him, the excitement that he have when he runs towards me, ain't no feeling like that. Yeah. Ain't no feeling like that, bro. No feeling like that. And, I, and tight as he hugged me, ain't no feeling like that, man. Mm. Uh. Now, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back to the way you like to relax. The only reason I'm going back, <laughs> hey is because, man, I don't do, hey, I don't no, do no, strip. No, 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 no. Listen, I, I, but listen, I, I, I don't I, do the strip club no more, man. No, Look, I, I ain't, hey, I, I don't no do that. Back. Hey, we 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 ain't doing it. We, we ain't making it rain. We ain't I doing none of it no that more, you man. You are a avid Miami visitor. Yeah. I hear you like Cancun. They say yeah. you like Cabo, Tulum, yeah. Turks. Yeah. Yo, and now you're telling down. me it's just all about the energy. Yeah, you but, know? but that's what I'm saying. So you ain't rocking with none of that no, no more? No, we do all that. But again, we take a group of people with us. Yeah. Yeah, so we're experiencing it together. You know what I mean? Yeah. It don't feel right when you're out there by yourself. Yeah. So we still taking a group of people where we're experiencing that. it together. I feel it. You know what I'm saying? I so what, we just going to be there? To, hey. I'm hey, this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, no, man. Go out there, man. And um, we do get away because, like, we want to go see different things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Try different food. You know, get What's away. What's your favorite Try location to go to? It is Tulum. Tulum. Yeah, it is. Because I had a good experience. There was all school. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And um, I really was able to get some, you know, some downtime in. You know what I mean? And um, and the food make it right. You know what I'm saying? Uh. Went fishing first time. Okay. Speedboat. You know what I'm saying? It's just different things like that. You know what I'm saying? Go out there and you know, relax. Parasailing. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Because I normally go and we don't do nothing. So I started, I started getting out of that habit. So I make it a point. Hey, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go. We're going to go. We're going to do it while we're here. Yeah. We're going to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, because I used to go to them spots and we ain't do nothing. Just, you know what I'm saying? Party. Chill out. Yeah. 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 Man, bro, you you got quite the influence, man. Mm. And I don't know if you, I know you probably know, but how do you deal with that? The influence? Yeah, you got a lot of it. I don't know what the influence, what kind of influence it be though? Like as far as what, with who or, or, or how? With everybody, you got influence around the city, your name, whole weight. Uh, I mean, we can go with the obvious influence. You had the marriage, the grand opening. That ain't easy to pull off. 
right? Not only yeah. that, I mean, look at the spot, the location, right? Yeah. Everybody around the city know you, everybody around the city. Now, one thing I will say, people praise you for how approachable you are, but yeah. you can't get next to you, yeah. which is kind of double turn. So, I mean, that's a lot of influence, right? That's why I'm asking yeah. you, how do you deal with all that influence? You're cool, you come, and I'm trying to probe deep to get inside of the exterior, but, but you got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't look at it like that, because like, you can catch me at any time going to anybody's spot. Mm -hmm. I'm saying no, like, I'm never. And uh, one of my homeboys said that the other day, he was like, man, you one of the few that can go anywhere like around here in Jackson, like, you know what I'm saying? I get, I get cut up on the west side. He like, you can go everywhere. I'm talking about your jury on with, 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 yeah. with. But it's the energy, bro. I'm not no threat, dog. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't impose no threat. Yeah. If the energy is, so if, if, yeah. if it comes, if something come their way, I didn't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I believe in that energy, yeah. man. So I want to give off the right energy. I don't give it time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, to get respect, you got to get respect. Yeah. So I, don't, I ain't on no, I ain't on nothing. You know what I mean? So I'm approachable. Yeah, yeah. You got to be. We doing business. Yeah. You feel me? Like what? What is it supposed to be? We supposed to be hiding? Yeah. No, man. These are the people you got to you gotta see and network with. Oh, mm -hmm. man. You got to be out here, man. We outside. So how did how did the relationship with you? Because a lot of people may or may not know you're president of CTE, right? Right. Right. How did the relationship with you and Jeezy uh, form? Man, right. Like how did how did you come into this role? Right. So this is the thing about it. I met Jeezy before the music. Okay. And. Uh, it go back to what we were just saying, being outside. You got certain people you run to when you outside. Yeah. He was the one of the ones I run to in the strip club. Or like I be in Houston. We're running to each other, man. Woo woo. But what really did it was when he was coming through Mississippi. And uh he got caught with a large amount of money. Mm. It's like over a million. And cash? Yeah, cash. In the car. So they seize the money. They call me, Coach K called me. They can me. do that? Yeah, if they catch you with a, what you mean? I ain't know that. I ain't what know that. What they gonna give you? Where Shit, you I ain't no street nigga. Yeah, where stupid. you gonna get it, where you I get it from? That. I ain't know that, I ain't know that, okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah, you gotta show, you got that from. I got you, I got you, yeah, man, you okay, gotta I can show see that, that though. Yeah, you gotta show, you got you riding just with a ticket? Yeah. I ain't paid no taxes on it or nothing? Okay. Come on, man. They wanna know where you got it from. They wanna know where you got that from. They took it. So. I just went through a similar situation in the airport. You did? Yeah. Recently? Went before that happened. Before his situation happened. Okay. So they took a large amount of money off me in the airport. So I had a lawyer to go get my money back. Because I could show the proof for that money. You feel what I'm saying? So I contacted my lawyer. I put him with my lawyer. My lawyer went and got most of their money back. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it really formed. That's how it started. It started then. And so I'm 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 cool with Coach K. You know what I'm saying? And uh he was managing at the time. Yeah. And after that, man, we started meeting in Miami. We started doing music together. You know what I mean? And um I just remember we was out there one time. The BMF, we was out there heavy. We was out there heavy. And I got signed with J Records at that particular time. So he was signed with Dev Jam, I'm signed with uh, Jay Records, mm -hmm. Clyde Davis. So at the Interscope, I ended up signing Clyde Davis. And um, I remember we was down there and we did a couple songs. One of them was Miss Me With That Rap Shit. Okay. And we did it at a studio that uh, my homeboy owned down there. Did the video, everything. Coach K called me and me, hey man, I want to put this record on uh, Trap or Die. Mm. Okay. He ended up putting the record on Travel Die. And I still ended up using it for my project. You know what I mean? And then on the production side, I had about three records on them. Cause I had signed a young producer from here. That's why I'm telling you about getting that sound. Uh, I had that sound from around here then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it's I ended up doing. Now. Yeah. That's what happened. Had about three records on them. Turned around, 
Love you song, you song, you end up doing that. The thing with Jay Record had another turn. Yeah. He like, man, that shit ain't working out over there, man. You come over here. Yeah. And that's when. Cause he's on record, fight. like publicly yeah. on record. Yeah. Boo is my right hand man. Oh yeah. Boo my God. Boo this. So I don't Boo do that. the yes man shit. Nah, for real. I don't real. do the yes man shit, man. For real. So like. And that's why I tell you about them artists. Certain artists that I seen, I seen it before it happened. You know what I'm saying? I seen it, so that's how we start getting into. And then I be in the studio when a lot of those records was made. That was hits out here. Yeah. I was in the studio when it happened. Yeah. I was there. Yeah. I was put my input in on the record. Who are you? <laughs> are you? What are you insecure about? You gotta have. Uh, you gotta have insecurities. You man, gotta have something. That 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 you, nags at you. I don't know though. You don't think so? Oh man, like the be out here, man, you gotta have a tough skin. So mm -hmm. I, I can't identify with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Cause like You know the other name they call me is cool, right? Everybody call me nah, cool. I ain't know that. Yeah, I everybody know that. call me cool too. You know I what I mean? I can see it. Yeah. I can see so it. they call me cool for a reason too. Like it ain't too much that we don't, you know what I'm saying? But underneath that exterior, hey, nothing, man. money. I'm just saying, but those those are things that I grew out of. They used to be there, but those things I worked on myself. I had to work on myself about those things. You see what I'm saying? So like, you gotta think about it, man. We've been doing this shit a long time, man. Yeah. A long time. And I told you, man, if I'm doing the same thing I was doing when I was 20, we didn't grow. So you see what I'm saying? Like, I told you, if you take anything from the conversation, I take things as they come. And I, like, I deal with it as it comes. We knocked that one out of the way, we knocked that one out, we going forward. Yeah, we we knocked out the way. Well, ain't no time to think about yeah. what we gonna do, we gonna sit over here and what? We gonna go back and forth, like, what, what gonna come out of it? Ain't nothing gonna come out of it, man. That's how, and, and that's just learning how to move as a man, though. Yeah. It's just learning how to move as a man, man. Like, like what, what, what it gonna be? Is it gonna be this? Or is it gonna be that? Like, what at the end Next of the day? Side. Yeah, come on. It ain't no. What are we gonna do? It ain't life threatening. I just came from that. You feel me? So rest of this shit, ice cream. It, it ain't life threatening. Yeah. Yeah. This shit, ice cream. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw. That's how I look at it. Yeah, that's all right. Man, so I gotta ask you just because I want to know what sports team do you like? Do you like to gamble? So I'm gonna answer both of them. So there are two questions. There are two questions, right? Uh huh. So the first question is what my favorite team, right? Mm -hmm. Jazz, you my favorite team. All right. Because it's the home team. Right. I'm with the home team. We ain't lose the drop. And uh, plus, I think Prime doing, you know, Coach Prime doing an amazing job with the guys, man. Yeah. Them kids. You know what I'm saying? And he bringing a lot of energy, the right energy around. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, he getting them back riled up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Facts. On the support side. You know what I mean? And that just show you what energy can do. Yeah. The right energy can do. Yeah. And I'm all for that. You know what I mean? So I think he's doing an amazing job. You know what I mean? And um. As far as do I gamble? Yeah, but the way I gamble is I gamble with life. I gamble with life. Gamble dice, I gamble with life. Real life. Explain. And, it, so, if you know anything, like, my next album is supposed to be Chance to Make Champ. And that's strictly for the risk taker. No risk, no reward. That's what I based it off. No risk, no reward. No risk, no reward. Change make sense. Risk taker. The one that's gambling and put it on the line. That's why I've been saying the whole time we've been here. Yep. We've been putting it on the line. Head first, we put it on the line. We gamble. We gamble with life though, in real life. Yeah. You, you once said, and I promise you, I know, I know you busy man, and, and all your people pulling you, they pulling us right. But mm -hmm. you once said, I got Mississippi. I got my state. My mm -hmm. state is behind me. Right. Do you feel? Do you still feel that way? Yeah, but I think on the transition side. Okay. As far as the support, you know what I'm saying? For me shifting on the entrepreneur side. 
You know what I mean? And um, yeah, I, I, I believe that. You still believe that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you want when you think about everything you've accomplished? What do you want your legacy to be? So, you know, the definition of legacy means like to leave someone a amount of money or a will. That, yeah, that's what legacy means. I appreciate the protein. Yeah. So, you know, if it's, you know, what I want to be remembered as or, you know what I mean? If, if uh, I think being remembered, man, I want to make sure like, first of the start with my family, make sure like, you know, I'm the best I can be with them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You uh, know, being a good father. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's foremost. The second part, and to be honest, this might go off the rail. This might go off the rail, but I want to see if you can follow it, right? I had a man tell me, like, you know, you can, you can judge the impact that a man had when it's time to go celebrate him when he passed, right? And when you just ask me, do I think my city behind me? I think if I was something that happened to me, you know what I'm saying, pro se, I think we still have to rent out that Coliseum. Oh, that'd be crushed, bro. You see what I'm saying? That'd be crushed, so you know what that mean, though? That mean I done had, legend, I done touched, but I done touched a lot of people. Yeah. And I think they'll come from near and far yeah. to come celebrate me. Yeah. And that's speaking volumes, because that means that love them got yeah. transpired somewhere. Okay. Whether it's on the business side, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The artist side, the entrepreneur side, the family side. You know what I mean? That's that's me going off the rail thinking, cause sometimes I think about that. You know what I mean? I'm like, what 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 that be? I can judge it off that. You're a legend. You're a legend. I can judge. Dog. I can judge, and I can live with that. Yeah. yeah. And if I had to do it again, I'd do it again. Do it all over. I'd do it again, bro. Man, well listen. Before before we let you get out of here, I got one personal question I want to ask you. And I, I tend to ask some guests this whose opinion I really expect, respect, excuse me. And the question is simple, it's, it's passion or skill, right? Mm-hmm. And I ask that question with this context. Do you feel like it's more important to be passionate about something or do you feel like it's more important to be skilled at something? They almost coincide with each other Okay. to me. I mean, I think they coincide. I think when you combine them, you get the right outcome. Yeah. I don't think you can't have one without, you know what I'm saying, the other. You can be passionate about something and it don't go nowhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But if you add the passion and the skill set, the hustle to it, you know what I'm saying, it'll, it'll take it'll take off. Yeah. But I, I don't think, you can do one without the other, you know what I mean? I don't think you should, like, I don't think you do one without the other. That's just me, you know what I mean? La- last question. Let me, I'm not gonna lie to you, this might not be my last question, but. Nah, we're going. I'm good. What, what has meant the most to you throughout all of this? What one thing has meant the most to Boo Rossini? throughout this almost 30 year journey at this point. Yeah. What has meant the most to you? I guess the fact that I can still be here, still talk about these issues, these situations, the circumstances we came from, you know what I mean? And uh, to be an inspiration to others that come, you know what I mean? And I try to lead by example too, you know what I mean? So that, I think that mean the most to me that do, people do view me in that light. Cause like, you know, I take my name serious, you know what I'm saying? I take it serious, you know what I'm saying? And I take how I move serious, you know what I'm saying? I try to do the right thing, you know what I'm saying? Overall, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And th- those periods I had to grow through though, yeah. you know what I'm saying? To get a, to get a real view on how life operates. Yeah. And that shit come with age. Well, you aging like wine, you know my saying? man. <laughs> so, 
Hey, I done been their age. They ain't been Never my been age. Your age. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I done heard that one before. Well, so, bro, that's what I'm saying, huh? Let me that's let me saying. let me give you a gift from the entire Dirty Napkins team, especially myself. Yeah. Something we do, we just want to tell you that we appreciate you. Right. We appreciate right. you taking the time, letting us into your beautiful establishment right. to really interview you, have a yeah. good conversation with you. So right. we want to give man, you it's that. It's all love, brother. man. It's all love, right? It's here, all man. good, yeah, man. man. See what I'm gonna wear this too, man. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Well, last thing I gotta ask you. Hey, you keep saying the last thing. This the last hey. time. I know I said last time the last time, but this really the last time. I promise you that. I promise you that. Jackson. Jackson. Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Jacktown, Mississippi. Jacktown. Where does Jackson hold a place in your heart? Man, hey, Jackson means so much to me, man. Like, I can't even explain it, you know what I mean? It means the same thing my hometown means. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, from day one, it's just been love and support for me. You know what I mean? So, they go a long way with me. You know what I mean? So, I love Jackson and Bill, man. And anything I can contribute to it, you know what I mean? I'm there for it. That's what I'm here. That's what I mean by planting the roots. You know what I mean? That's why I came back to do it. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't sit with myself if I didn't do it. I could have did this shit anywhere else. Really, I ain't had to do it. You feel what I'm saying? Cause just yeah. rolled off. Man, man, at this point. Yeah, but man, that's what I'm saying. And, and the thing about it, it just don't stop here, man. Like the overall thing, man. I want to do something to well. I do community housing, like develop, you know, subdivision. You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing. After I get this situation, after I get this situated right here, you know, I want to keep investing in it. Cause like. What they do at the end of the day? Provide jobs. That's big to you. That's, that it provides jobs. I was I done been them kids age, man. You know what I'm saying? I done been Probably them kids that, age, man. man. You touching me on a different level talking no, about that, God. man. Cause that's yeah. what the city needs. Yeah. The city yeah. needs jobs. Yeah. And the fact you bringing that here, yeah. mind blowing, brother. Nah, and I commend you, you for that. No, nah, love, man. One life, one love. One life, one love. Now you see what it's based off. You see what it was based off? Even back then. That's what it was based off. One life, one love, bro. One life, one love. Mr. No Boo, it's been a pleasure, baby. Yeah. It's been love, a pleasure, man. man. Love, bro. We hope you enjoyed this interview with Boo Rossini here at his restaurant, Trio. Special thanks to our sponsors. Your contributions allow us to spread awareness to local communities around the world. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms at Dirty Napkins. Until next time, it's your host, Jay Taylor. Bye, Dirty Napkins. Look at these selfish props, man. Oh. <laughs>